boys mad, got the girl they dream about. Girls mad, cause I ain't as free now. Tucker and Pillsbury, role model. How you doing, my guy? Oh my god. I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm very good. What a momentous few weeks you've had from releasing your debut album, RX. Now you're currently in between the two weekends of Coachella. Are you reflecting as you go? I am. I'm trying not to revel in it too much, but I am re-watching all of the videos on my phone from it. <laughs> Are you happy with how the set went? I am. It was like, like it, I mean, I had really low expectations. I just tend to do that with everything, but it which is good because it made it feel like it was like perfect but we had like one fuck up halfway through where i kicked a water bottle and it went straight into all of our electrical sound boards and everything and <laughs> it spilt all over it and like our like the music kept cutting out for a couple songs but <laughs> other than that great happy with it that's good. I didn't even notice that. I watched your set. I must have missed that. Yeah, I don't know which song. I know going out had it was cutting in and out. It wasn't anything big. It was more for us. In the years, hey, it's it artistic. Was, you know, it's the remix, right. the Coachella remix. It was an artistic choice on my part. <laughs> yeah, a bit hardcore. I know that you're a bit of a fangirl when you meet other celebrities. Is there someone that you met over the weekend that you're still buzzing from? Yes. Who? Um uh maddie healy oh you're a huge fan massive i i'm like waiting to post the picture because i just need to hold on to it for a little bit longer but like anyone who knows me knows how important that dude is to me it's like the one artist that like i can say i look up to and inspires me and like pushes me and like I watch all of his sets, his festival sets before my shows, like just to get me into whatever and like meeting him. It was insane. I've never been like truly starstruck to the starstruck to the point where I can't talk. And it was like embarrassing because I was with my friends and they're like, what are you doing? Dude? What did you say? What do you say to your idol like that? I, I like, I mean, I met a few of them at the festival this week and I literally just like start with like I love you like I just come right <laughs> off the bat and I'm just like dude I fucking love you um and but yeah I don't know Maddie like I genuinely I was like too starstruck to speak I was like I stare at your face every day like I love you <laughs> um That's but he was so very nice yeah he was very nice and um yeah super kind yeah, hell yeah. You were hanging out with your bestie, Omar Apollo, <laughs> and Julio Rulio. Was that your first time meeting Rule? First time meeting Rule. Um, that picture I sent think... fandoms into, like, an absolute frenzy, by the way. Yo, That's the worst collab. part is, like, that post got better engagement than, like, my album release post. <laughs> like, my album announcement <laughs> shit. I was like, of course. But it was amazing. Rule, like, I think I got introduced to him through Omar, like, a long time ago. And we were, like, internet pen pals and then uh me and omar were like talking for a bit and i was super proud of omar saw a little bit of his set and like me and him have been through hell together from the start so it was amazing to like we both dropped albums on the same day I was gonna say. both played coachella the same day like we're always kind of doing things together it's cool um and then i spotted rule across the way like fucking mile away and we like yeah. sprinted to each other man yeah hard yeah. to hard to miss hard to miss beautiful man i love them and it was cool to finally meet them hell yeah well yeah um you guys will have to hop in the studio together that would be imagine imagine the frenzy that would cause <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see we'll see we'll see well we also know that tucker pillsbury loves to ride alone let's get into some of the music shall we um so rx looking through the track list there are quite a few clickbaity titles in there. You've got Die For My Bitch, the opening track, Strip Club Music, Masturbation Song, to name a few. Um, and I have to ask about this last one. So it's got huge baby-making vibes. What did your parents say when they heard it? They um, they didn't tell me what they... I mean, my mom loves the album. There's, okay. like random, there's random songs that she picks to like um 
I'm trying to think. Oh, save a seat. She loves save a seat. Yeah. Uh, I knew she would. That was kind of like a. I like the style of that one, two. Yeah, it's like an old two. soul type of. It's cool. Um, I figured, but she doesn't mention that song, which I think is smart. I don't want to have that conversation with her. But I mean, when I like announced the album, she saw it and she was like, "What is going on?" But, but I think. When she heard it, it made her, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so you do like to write alone, hey. Tell me about your writing process. Um, it's like just that. I mean, it's definitely changed over the past two years. Um, but from the start and today, it's like I work with a producer. Specific, specifically for this album, it was Spencer Stewart who did the whole album with me. Um, and we'll have like a session and I'll just be like can you let's just produce stuff let's just like make give me like 10 guitar loops and like a couple piano loops no drums nothing and then I'll take those I'll go home I'll write that night maybe for two nights or something and then I'll bring him songs and we'll like produce them out and turn them into whatever um like all of these songs started as just acoustic songs um and I don't know. That's like the easiest way for me to write. I think like chords alone help me think of shit. It's just very cinematic. And then as soon as you start adding like drums, I'm just like, ah. But <laughs> I, I love just like the most bland uh, guitar loops possible just to write to. Interesting. Okay. So like having you have like, having almost no distractions within the music gives you more creative freedom. I think so. I think so. Yeah. I mean, like, I think RX and Master, well, Masturbation has drums. Um, but RX is like the one song that we just completely left damn near close to like the demo. Yeah. That's a beautiful way to end the album as well. I love that. I love that song. Is there one Thank line you. in the album that kind of really like tickles your brain where you're like, oh yeah, that's that's the lyric. Like, oh, I'm so glad. I'm happy with that one. There's, there's a lot. Like, um, I, I think life is funny. Like that first verse, there's a lot of lyrics that I love. Even just the opening, like I saw Jesus kissing on the same sex, dance to some Aphex. I love that. Yeah. Um, Men will be men so they don't get their way. Friends will be friends as long as they're getting paid. Um, okay, I have to ask you a question that I know everyone who watched your music video for Never Let You Go is thinking. What was on the face of your co-star for that one? Was she making eye contact? Was she smiling? Was she laughing? Was she deadpan? I know we everyone's were laughing. about the opposite view. No, we, we, were, we were laughing. I know. TikTok <laughs> loves to make up their own little narrative but we were having like the f best time like you can see me laughing like yeah. the whole time and shit and like that was the whole concept when I wrote the video I wanted it to be a very real performance um and because I knew it would just be fun and we'd be like smiling the whole time and that's exactly what it was um we did it like eight or nine times and you know <laughs> There's the video. Which take was that one? Was that one like one of the first takes? I feel like by nine times you'd have been like, okay. That was one of the golden hour ones. So that was probably like third take, I'll yeah, say. Nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay, so you've got some sundown takes lurking somewhere. Yeah, there's there's a few. There's yes. I've gotta say, I've seen a huge influx of like shiny black puffers after that video. You've had such an impact on the winter culture. I love that. I love that the most simple generic jacket is now <laughs> <laughs> popping. But yeah, I don't know. That's cool. I mean, Taste it wasn't makeup. intentional to like match that much. And then we like showed up in our outfits and we're like, oh, okay, we're this, we're fully matching. <laughs> Respect. Okay, Tucker, before I let you go, I have to check back in on a few things that we talked about last time. First sure. of all, have you hugged Sizzy yet? Surely. Come on. I haven't even met her. I no, I haven't even met her. I wonder if she'll be lurking around weekend too of Coachella. Maybe. I hope so. I feel like she would go to a Harry show or something. But mm. um, but Maddie Healy moment will like numb that for a little bit longer. Yeah, so true. It'll Look, hold me on. 
from don't tell Caesar, <laughs> but like probably a little, little more important. Right. Um, it's, okay. it's closer to home. Totally, totally. And finally, what's your favorite brand of coffee? Oh, Starbucks. Still the same. Still a Starbucks fan. Respect. Well, yeah, to the grave. <laughs> to the grave, baby. Well, role model, I'm very proud of you. Congrats on Coachella. Congrats on RX and keep crushing it, man. Thank you. Appreciate it.